Okay, hello and welcome to day two of, of week one, text week of this series, this video series. I think Dim's calling it a boot camp as well. So this sort of Excel battle focused boot camp and video series that we're giving away for free over the next few weeks and maybe for longer. Uh, I thought I'd start with a funny story. It's funny if you enjoy the thought of me bashing my head against the wall for, for quite a long time this morning. Uh, I'm not joking. I probably checked this workbook that I've released 50 times in the last week or so, and I sent it to very uh, uh, professional, very, very thorough people as well to check it over for me. And yesterday when I was hovering over the publish button, I just had that that feeling in my stomach. I thought, no, I I'll check it again. I bet there's a typo in there somewhere. Uh, I checked it again. I did find a typo. I hovered over the button again and I thought, no, I'll go for a walk. I'll get some fresh air. I'll clear my mind. I'll come back. Checked it again. Thought I was good. Hit publish. And I immediately had that feeling back in my stomach. And I thought, there's definitely another typo in there. And lo and behold, within an hour, I had an email and a message from a full stack member saying I've spotted a typo. So by last night, we were on version two. And then I woke up this morning to two emails from two people that had spotted minor typos as well. So we're on version three already. I, I think we could probably get to version 10 within a fortnight. Uh, so so thank you to people that are, are kind of letting me know when they spot little little bugs and typos. None of it's major, but but just keep them coming so I can keep uh, you know refining the work because we go. Anyway, so there you go. Download version three if you haven't got it already. So today we're going to look at text split, text before and text after. And if you think about what we did yesterday with, with left, right, len, mid, search, find, for me, these more recent additions to Excel offer kind of nicer, a slightly more sophisticated solutions to some of the problems that we probably would have dealt with with those functions before. They also all lean in on the new sort of spill functionality of, of modern Excel, as we're calling it. So, so you can produce results that spill into multiple cells, rows, columns, both, by entering a formula into one cell. Essentially, it's this dynamic array functionality that, that is, is so powerful. And it's why we said in the intro, you know, we're going to be using modern Excel. Uh, if, if you aren't familiar with dynamic arrays and the way that they work, I would strongly suggest you start getting comfortable with it. It doesn't mean that you have to start using them in all the work that you do, but you are going to see people using these more and more. And they're going to use them because they offer better solutions. So, so I think there's just still a bit of a period of time we're going through at the moment where there will be a, a lag of, of companies in particular and individuals getting up to speed with the more, um, well, to be honest, just with the 365 license. But it doesn't mean that we shouldn't be using them. They're very, very powerful functions. So text split first. Let's have a look at text split. What does it do? Well, again, luckily, uh, these functions do exactly what you might expect they do based on the name of the function. So text split allows you to split text based on a delimiter or a set of delimiters. So essentially, it's like a function version of text to columns, and it's really, really powerful. So a really simple example that we can we can show here is here. So you've got a cell with text split. We're referring to a text string. We're looking for a particular delimiter. In this case, we're, we're looking for the hyphen. And text split is splitting that text into the component parts before that delimiter and after. So you've got here for anybody that hasn't seen the, the sort of dynamic array, uh, the way that they work, you enter the, the formula into one cell and you get this outline where you can see that it's spilling into other cells. And you can also see that the formulas in full sort of black font there. But if I click on the cell where it's spilt into, then it's it's kind of light gray instead. So you, you could type stuff in there. It's going to then give you a spill error. That formula is entered once into that cell and it spills across into the next column. So that's what it's doing. It, it's saying, based on a delimiter that we set up, split the text. 
as many times as you need to based on the number of times you find that delimiter. Now, there is a complication with tech split, which is, is in many circles called the array of an array issue. I'm going to come back to that. So there's a few variations that I just want to walk you through uh, here in this video. The first one is that if you have multiple instances of that delimiter that you've set up in your text string, then text split will split the text into however many cells that it needs to. So in this instance, the hyphen is in there twice after the month and before the name at the end of the text string. And that means that text split is now splitting that text into three columns. You could also use curly brackets. I don't think that many people are aware of this, certainly if you've not been involved in the battles. If you use the curly brackets in the formulas, you're essentially allowing yourself to, or allowing text split to search for any of the delimiters that you set up within the curly brackets separated by a comma. So in this instance, we're saying split this text by the hyphen or by the semicolon. And I think, oh no, so it's the hyphen, the comma or the colon in there. So it's looking at the text string and when it finds any one of those delimiters, it's going to split the text. I also just walked through a few things here. So you can sort of split the text uh, by, by row or column. So what you can see there is I've added an extra comma here, which allows us to go from column delimiter to row delimiter. So within the sort of inbuilt functionality of text split, you can split the text by, by columns or by rows. And I think this is really useful to point out. And this kind of leads me into the, the array of the array issues. You can actually split the text by both the column and the row delimiter in one go. So what we're doing here is we're looking up one cell of text and you can see in that one cell, we've got quite a lot of sort of stacked information. We've got uh, a number of entries for a name with a hyphen and then a team, comma, name, hyphen, team. And that repeats and repeats. We're using text split in one cell, but we're using both the column and the row delimiter. And that's then allowing this to spill across columns and rows. So we've got the name in one column and the team in the other. I think that's really useful. There's a few other kind of elements to, to what you've got with text split. So if you've got blanks being returned as part of the output, you can choose to ignore them by, by setting one of the, the parameters to true. So here we've got back-to-back -back delimiters, two hyphens next to each other. And that means that as part of this spill range, the cell highlighted in red fill there is blank because there's nothing between those two hyphens. And by setting this uh, setting here to true, uh, it is literally called ignore empty. That means that it will just ignore the blanks for you. You can also deal with case sensitivity. So you can set text split up to, to be case sensitive or to not be case sensitive. That only really applies if you're you're searching for you know letters or strings of letters together. And you can also set it to deal with uh, essentially parts of the array that are, are missing. So in this example, Stacy doesn't have the element that deals with the team name, but because the array has to be returned within a certain structure, uh, if you don't have any padding in there, it's just going to give you this hash NA reference as part of the output array. But actually, you can set it up where you're saying, look, if you find a, a missing piece, then return no team rather than leaving the hash NA in there. So there's lots of kind of flexibility that you've got with text split. I thought I'd just show you the example uh, that we have for one of the exercises. Because again, I, this is probably one of the most common use cases you'll see in the battles. Here we have a string of cell references basically in one cell with a, a semicolon uh, separating them. So this is a classic use case for text split where you just go, all right, look at that long text string. The delimiter that we're going to use is the semicolon. And there you go. You, it will then split that by column. Now, I probably don't want it by column in that instance. I want it by row. So you add another comma. That means you're now using the row delimiter setting. 
And there you go, you've got all of those individual cell references profiled down. Now, when you get into some of the lookup stuff that we do next week, this is a perfect use case for something like an indirect. Maybe if we're looking at another worksheet and we want to look at cell references, we could have taken everything from this one cell, text split that into individual cell references, and then we could use an indirect to look at the cell reference or the contents of the cell references in another worksheet. I want to jump back to the array of the array issues, and I'll do my absolute best to explain this properly. D Dim's had to kind of talk me through this a few times, and it, it, it can be a bit complex. But text split is one of these functions, a little bit like sequence, where the array that is produced as an output can be of a different size and shape to that which you start off with. So it's very, very easy if you think of sequence as well. You, you start off with a cell reference and what you end up with as an output is a bunch of rows and columns being spilt into. So there's a bit of a challenge when you uh, when you try and set text split up with a range instead of just looking at an individual cell. It's like Excel just then assumes that the output range from text split is going to be the same size and shape as the input range. So what I've tried to do here, and it hasn't worked, is I've tried to say, all right, text split this range of cells here with text in them. Use the delimiter hyphen. But what you can see, if you compare it to what we've got at the top here, when we just re referenced the individual cell, it's spilt across the columns. Now that we've referenced a range of cells, it's just returning the first column, the first field. Why is it doing that? Well, it's looking at the size and the shape of the input range, and it's assuming that that is the size and shape of what you need as an output. So it's essentially cutting off some of the results that we want at the back end of that of that output, which isn't so good. So for, for text split, you either have to just use the, the, the calculation and set it up to look at an individual cell, or you could use this workaround, which I'm sure Dim will look at. So what I've done here is I've said, okay, firstly, let's text join the range. So take that range of individual cells, join them together with text join and add a delimiter that we've never used before. In this case, it's the semicolon. And then you can text split because you're essentially text splitting from one consolidated cell of data. Have a look through that if it's not clear. It's a, it's a bit of a convoluted workaround, but it does work. All right, so that's text split. Then we've got text before and text after. And this shouldn't really take too long to work through because it, it just does exactly what you would expect it to do. So very, very similar to text, uh, text split. This allows you to extract text before a delimiter or it allows you to extract text after a delimiter. Now, one of the big differences is you can now reference a range and get the output as the right range when you use text before and text after. Why? Well, if you think of what you're doing with text before and text after, you're only ever going to want one field, whether it's a column or a row, of data coming as your output. So there's no instance here if you reference a range as your inputs that you're going to end up losing any data in your outputs. Now, there are some really powerful additional elements to text before and text after, not least that you can set it to search for certain instances of a delimiter. So here we're saying, you know, we're looking for the hyphen as the delimiter, but we want you to split it based on the second instance of the, the hyphen in that text string. And it goes further than that. So actually, if I scroll down here, you can use negative numbers to start the search from the end of the text rather than the start. So if you just think con conceptually about what you've got there, you've got two uh, functions, text before and text after, that are going to allow you to extract text before or text after. But you can also start the measure, start the search for whatever the delimiter is from the start of the text string or the end of the text string. And that means you've got an incredible amount of flexibility to extract certain elements of text. And actually, the best example I can give you of that 
is in the exercises because it's basically what we were trying to do yesterday with left, right, lend, find, mid. Look how much easier this is. So, so this uh, this exercise was trying to extract the day reference at the end of these text strings. Yesterday we had to stack, I think, find, len, and and write to do this. Here we can just say, all right, look at that range of text, find the hyphen delimiter, but start from the end of the text and split it, take the text that comes after the first instance of that hyphen when you search for it from the end of the text. And that's it, it gets it right. Another example here in the exercises is that say we're trying to extract the full names of, of people from this data set. So you've got two names, but they're all of different lengths. You can just use text before. So text before, look for the first instance of the hyphen and give me all the text before that. So, so much easier than having to go, all right, find something in there, then look at the position with mid and cut it up that way. And that's pretty much it for today. So, so have a look through those two tabs. Have a go at the exercises at the end of the tabs. I think there's one or two. There's just one extra exercise that you can have a go at after that. The solution is always there in this workbook with these exercises. We don't want to stress you out having to, to you know, think too much and Google things. So have a go at the exercises. I hope you enjoy it. And tomorrow, I think we're going to move on quickly, quicker video to look at the classic text to columns.